This section covers estimation, that is, how we use our observed data to estimate the parameters of our underlying model. We will cover three methods that have been developed to estimate parameters, though you will also meet a number of other methods in later CT subjects. The first unit, Method of Moments Estimation, details a method of estimation that is based on the sample and the model moments. We will use this in subject CT6 to estimate the parameters of a loss distribution, that is, a distribution used to model claim amounts of a general insurer. We'll also use it to estimate parameters in a time series model of data. The second unit, Maximum Likelihood Estimation, or MLE for short, is where our estimate is the value which maximizes the likelihood of getting our observed sample. We will make use of this throughout subject CT4 to obtain estimates for the transition intensity in the two-state Markov model of mortality and the transition intensities in other more general Markov jump processes. We also use it to estimate the parameters of a survival function and finally we use it to model the probability of death in a binomial model of mortality and the force of mortality in a Poisson model of mortality. In subject CT6 we will use maximum likelihood estimation to estimate the parameters of a loss distribution and also the parameters in a generalized linear model. We could also use them to estimate parameters in a time series model but it tends to be a little bit too messy. The third unit, maximum likelihood of sensor data, develops how we can use maximum likelihood estimation to estimate parameters when we do not have the exact values of all the data in our sample. We will use this in subject CT4 to estimate the lifetime distribution function where we have sensor data. And again in subject CT6 we will use it to estimate parameters of loss distributions. The fourth unit, maximum likelihood estimation with truncated data, involves estimating the parameters where we have no sample values from part of the distribution. Again, we will use this in subject CT6 to estimate the parameters of loss distributions. The fifth unit, method of least squares estimation, details the third method of estimating parameters, this time by minimizing the error terms in our model. We will use this in subject CT6 to estimate parameters in a time series model of data. The final two units look at the properties of our estimators. The bias and mean square error unit looks at the average value and the spread of results obtained from estimators of parameters. In subject CT4, we look at the properties of estimators in two-state Markov models and other more general Markov jump processes. We also use it in the proportional hazard model and the binomial and Poisson models. We mention bias in subject CT6 in time series models, generalized linear models and EBCT, but we don't do much with it. Similarly, we mention the mean square error in Bayesian estimation and time series, but again don't do much with it. Finally, the asymptotic distribution of maximum likelihood estimators gives the distribution of an estimator for large samples. We can use this to obtain confidence intervals for an estimate. Again, in subject CT4, we look at these properties of estimators in two-state Markov models and other Markov jump models. Also, again, in proportional hazard models and the binomial and Poisson models. We use this in subject CT6 to develop a test of significance of parameters in generalized linear models.